there, this is Sherry Hayes with MomDevice.com. I'm the mom of 15, been married 37 years to my sweetheart, and um, I've been homeschooling for 31 years. <laughs> so I thought today I would continue, actually finish up my series on large family child training, and today we're going to talk about love in truth. I hope this helps. Stay tuned. <music> talk about loving in truth. Now, there is a certain kind of love that we talk about as human beings that has nothing to do with true love because it's mostly just about um, shared sentimentality. Okay, so it's kind of a mushy, kind of emotional expression, but it doesn't necessarily set people free or really help them because it's not coupled with truth. It's not coupled with righteousness. It's not coupled with true goodness. Now, an example of this that I'd like to bring out, and I know it's something kind of silly, so you have to forgive me, but uh, it has to do with um, the original Star Wars series of movies. And in one I remember watching as a kid, or a young person, that um, there was a monster, and people fell in this, you know, Jabba the Hutt, boom, boom. okay, people, he would put people in this pit with this monster and the monster would eat them and you know he had handlers that would watch this and so uh when he sent i think it was luke skywalker down there then or was it anyway somebody who sent down there was it han solo i think it was han solo anyway whoever he sent down there was able to cause the monster's demise the monster died right and so we're all clapping, saying, oh, that horrible monster died. He was a man-eater. But the handler of the monster was crying. <laughs> and he had a guy, and they were, they were sympathetic to each other, and they were crying because the monster died. And sometimes I'm afraid in life that when we are really show, think we're, think we're showing love, we're actually helping someone to be evil, or we're actually congratulating or sympathizing with someone over evil. And so that can't be love. See, love as an affection without truth actually doesn't help anybody. It doesn't bless anyone. It doesn't help them. So when we when we love, we have to love in truth. We have to speak the truth in love, okay? Now, Jesus didn't say that love sets us free. I know that we kind of think that. I mean, it's almost like a slogan or something we can make a meme of or something. But love doesn't set us free truth sets us free. Jesus said you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Okay, we can coddle someone. We can cuddle them and coddle them and stroke them and, and make them feel all comfortable all the way to hell. We truly can. And as parents, parents sometimes must be tough in order to be loving. Okay. And um, when we love someone with truth, this is the true love because it involves risk. Because when we speak the truth into someone's life, we run the risk of losing them. Because let's say that they don't want to hear the truth or they don't want to obey the truth. Then all of a sudden, they don't consider us to be their friend. And so they decide that they don't want to be in relationship with us. Now, when kids are small, yeah, I think a lot of parents run into this problem because they want to be always their little kid's hero and they always want their little kids to like them. But if you aren't speaking the truth to little kids, if you're not telling them, no, Johnny, you can't have those cookies before dinner because then I know you won't eat the good food and he throws a fit and you're afraid he doesn't like you. And so you, you know, there's not that peaceful feeling. And so you're constantly giving in to him because you want to have peace between you. All you're going to do is really lead your your child down a rotten path and it's only going to get worse it's not going to get better as parents we have to be willing to speak the truth to our children and risk them not liking it risk them not liking us but i guarantee especially if you start with little kids if you're going to speak the truth to them you gain their respect as you go along now as they get into their teens and they start making their own decisions then you might run into some problems, but then you also have your integrity before the Lord that you have to keep. You have to keep true to the truth, and you have to know that. I'll, I'll get into this in a minute. Just a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. When you are willing to speak the truth and love, you are truly having that other person's best at heart, 
and it honors God and it seeks to manifest the life of God in someone else's life instead of just being like uh, mushy and emotional which you can be mushy and emotional about telling the truth you can do it in such a kind spirit that people can't help but want to receive it anyway um, you manifest this life of God it, that where, where the truth is you know um, the Holy Spirit he, uh, Jesus said he came to give us life and that more abundantly and he said where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty truth sets you free and there is liberty okay truth is liberty sentimentality leads to bondage when you have when you're so moved only by sentimentality you can't get free you can't get free from soul, negative soul ties with people you can't get free from the pain of past events or the pleasure of past events so you can't live in the day so it puts you in bondage to something that no longer exists to say okay so here are some scriptures I would like to share on this vein Proverbs 27 verse 6 says this faithful are the wounds of a friend but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful think about it kisses emotional lovey 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 but when when a true friend tells you, hey, you're doing something wrong, you should really think about it. Boy, that, that's, that's true friendship. And if you really want to be a friend to your kids, you have to be willing to say, this is wrong. Stop doing that. Right? You have to be willing to do that. Okay, here's another proverb. Proverbs 28, 23. He who rebukes a man will later find more favor than one who flatters with his tongue do flattery too it's not just about being physically emotionally attached to someone it's also flattering with the tongue letting you know building them up with fluff and just uh, complimenting them with no real truth to it or anything you know um, if you rebuke somebody openly it's better than that okay and I think we all feel that way in some ways don't we why didn't you tell me why didn't you tell me I was messing up you don't really care about me right we think we're being so smart when all we tell them is what they want to hear okay this is King David, what he said in Psalm 141, verse 5. Let the righteous man strike me. Let his rebuke be an act of loving devotion. Rebuking an act of loving devotion. It is oil for my head. Let me not refuse it. For my prayer is ever against the deeds of the wicked. So he doesn't want to become the wicked. He wants God to come and since he wants someone to come and tell him the truth so he can get out. You know, it's like... God, if I ever start doing X, Y, Z, please smack me. <laughs> Stop me from being that way because I, I want to know. I don't want to act that way. I don't want to be that way. So um, David, King David actually talked about that too. So when, we, when we're talking about this, um, we need to teach our children to appreciate rebuke and correction. When coming from godly people, who God, whom God has placed in their lives who put their best at heart. I'm not talking about, I mean, there are a lot of people that will criticize you and you should not listen to them. <laughs> there are people, worldly people, that really, um, they don't really care about God or about you or anything. They just want to have a chance to be critical or a chance to, you know, feel big about themselves. You don't have to listen to that, those people. And you have to teach your children to discern between the two because um, they're there is a real tendency in us on the other side on the opposite side of this is to develop a fear of man and that is not God either that is the opposite side of this and that is something we need to help them to, to develop, develop a discernment and to stay away from the Bible says that the fear of man is the snare of the devil so we need to keep them away from people who uh, they just want to the, the, they're saying, well, this is what you should do. And so they, they start doing what the people say just because they don't want to incur someone's way. They want to make somebody else happy. They want to get somebody else's approval. That's not what we're talking about here either. Now, there is a warning in this. And all parents can be very guilty. I mean, lots of us can be guilty in all of our, all of our uh, relationships. And that is, this is not meant to be an excuse for being a busybody. That means we don't need to unnecessarily get into people's business and start telling them how to live and start saying, it's because I love you, you know, that I'm ripping you all apart to pieces and I'm telling you all this stuff. Or let's say that um, we must always 
Sometimes we can think we have someone's best at heart, but it's from our own brain and it's not spirit led. It's not God's best for them. It's what we're just thinking. Okay. It's from the flesh. It's from the natural man. Okay. So we need to have an understanding in ourselves. What are the things that God actually wants me to communicate to this person and stick with that and only do that when God gives you the okay. All right. Because sometimes God's going to say, no, you, you might see something that's happening in a person and God says, no, I'm working. Don't tell them that. It's not time. Sometimes people aren't in the right place to hear it anyways. So you're just wasting your breath, right? Because sometimes we have to be at the lowest ebb. We have to see that our that what we're doing is totally futile before we'll be opening before we'll be opening ourselves up to someone else's advice or looking for some help from someone. Isn't it true? And remember, uh, according to um, 2 Corinthians 10, 1, we are supposed to operate in the gentleness of Jesus stands at the door and he knocks. He doesn't barrel on in. He doesn't bulldoze over us. He gives us the choice of whether we want to listen or not. Because God is a gentle gentleman. And that's the definition of gentleness. That you respect the other person's ability to make choices. So just remember that, okay? Um, now... Here's another scripture that I wanted to share with you. And, and it's from Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Okay, be free from pride-filled opinions, for they will only harm your cherished unity. Don't allow self-promotion to hide in your hearts, but in authentic humility, put others first and view others as more important than yourselves. And that's from the, I'm pretty sure that's from the Passion Translation. If you ever have a chance... That's a great translation to read along with your New King James. Now, I love New King James because it is just straightforward and it's not missing parts. <laughs> but the, the Passion Translation just um, opens up a little more of a dimension sometimes and just gives you a little more to think about. But I never do this in place of New King James. I just do it to augment, if that makes sense. So I hope this gives you some food for thought. I know you'll notice my surroundings. What we did is we went, went down the basement in a storage room. This is a rental. It has this, this huge storage room. We have it filled with all of our moving boxes for when we move to our forever home. Um, not forever, <laughs> but our own home. But so we, what we did is we um, took some kills and we primed the walls and we stuck pretty things on the shelves. <laughs> And this way I have a permanent place to put the camera and I can come down here at any time and I can just video away and I don't have to worry about schedules and keeping everybody quiet and resetting, re reinventing the wheel every time I want to make a video. So hopefully I'll be more consistent. <laughs> thank you for all your sweet comments and thank you for liking my channel and I hope that I can be here more consistently for you now. If there are any requests, if there's anything you want to ask me about child training, about homeschooling, about homemaking, please put your comment below and I will try to add that to a video in the future. So you have a wonderful day. Please like and subscribe and click the bell. Bye-bye.